this computer. Okay. Um, I'd like to have you guys like um, at least uh, log into the chat room and uh, just type in hello or something with your name attached to it. And that kind of helps me take attendance um, so that I don't have to t actually take real attendance with the sheet and everything. Although today I'm going to take attendance with my little printout for the class. Uh, we're getting there. Okay, one, two, one, two, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so far is good. A lot of uh, people ringing my doorbell. I thought that you guys could just get in here without having to ring the doorbell, so that's good. Hey, look at all those people saying hi. This is cool. Very good. All right. This helps actually because I can try to put a name to a face. I can put a name to a Hollywood Square up on the. Um, screen there. It does feel a lot like Hollywood Squares or the, bra the uh, what was it called? The Brady Bunch? Yeah, the Brady Bunch. Hollywood Boulevard. Hollywood Boulevard. I, f I lived through the Brady Bunch. I saw them on television in the 1970s and I can't remember what they were either. But when you put up the, uh, the grid pattern, we all look like we're in the Brady Bunch opening sequence. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Okay, it is after one o'clock. We can definitely get started now. Welcome everybody to um, Basic Design, um, Art 115. Um, this is an introduction to uh, um, two-dimensional two design. And my name is James Fritz. I'm a professor here at the college. Um, I teach art classes, but mostly I teach weird things like bronze casting, sculpture. I have taught ceramics before. And you'll find a common theme thread here is that all of those things are really, really difficult to teach online and to kind of uh, strain through a wire to get to you guys. But this quarter, I'm even teaching a sculpture class online. So we're gonna see how that works. Uh, I want to welcome you guys uh, to basic design. Um, all, all during the summertime, we were trying to plan for this and to figure out how we were going to meet with you guys um, online or in person and make it safe and safe for you guys, but mostly safe for me because as you can see, I'm old and decrepit and they thought that maybe I would get the virus from one of you guys and die and nobody wants to see Mr. Fritz die. So we're doing this online and we're gonna to try to do our entire design class online. Um, so I've, I've talked to a lot of people about designing online classes and I taught my uh, 3D design class online last spring. And the feedback that I got from students was that they really appreciated having this kind of a format where it was live, it was synchronous, it felt like a classroom. There was the sage on the stage, the talking head teacher who was live and could actually respond to your questions, comments, and uh, you know that it wasn't just somebody who uh, put up all of the stuff in the e-learning shell and gave you an assignment at the beginning of the week and expected you to um, turn it in by the deadline at the end of the week because that is the most boring deadly way to take classes and do online work. So this is as close to face-to-face -to -face and live as we can possibly get. As I continue working with you this week, I'm going to build a maker's table right next to my teaching station here with an overhead um, uh, webcam looking down on the tabletop and so I'm going to be able to switch between webcams so that you can either see me talking to you and lecturing and stuff um, or you can see me doing a demonstration where the view is looking down on the tabletop while I'm manipulating materials and stuff. Um, the way that I teach basic design is that I still have a very um, uh, uh, good <laughs> uh, respect for developing real hands-on skills um, 
for the for the artist or designer basic design is a foundations level class for either uh, people who are going to become um, art majors or interested in the visual arts of any kind or designers and design majors um, and some of you may be taking the digital design degree here at Southwestern. Um, digital design is an associate of science degree that you can take here at SWAC. The person who um, runs it, oh my gosh, am I gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, melt, murf, I'm gonna mess up his name. Um, does anybody know and wanna chime in on what, uh, it's not Daniel, shoot. Anyway. He's, Joseph. Joseph, Joseph Tremonti, thank you, teaches digital design in our Brookings campus in Brookings. It's a completely online um, degree program. And so that is an option for you guys if you're interested in art, if you are a little bit more interested in a job or developing some actually marketable skills that would get you a job. Um, the digital design program um, gets you a, um, knowledgeable with the um, Adobe suite of software products, including Photoshop and Illustrator, um, their web design uh, product, and other things that uh, make you a good graphic designer, especially online, so that you can do web design or graphic design digitally uh, with digital tools uh, completely online on your computer. So if that's of any interest to you, think about that, that's possible as something you could do, you could add that, um, do a uh, degree change or a change of major to get into the digital design program. Um, my classes um, and the way that I teach is mostly geared towards the art major, the person who is going to um, go on to a four-year uh, college program, getting a bachelor's degree, um, in the liberal arts, but mostly majoring in studio art. So if you're interested in some of the traditional areas of studio art, like painting, drawing, sculpture, ceramics, uh, printmaking, um, those things are still out there. They're still being taught even in the 21st century and in this age of digital tools. And so that's a wonderful possibility. We have art schools in the state of Oregon. We have our colleges and universities, both private and public that you can transfer to for a four-year degree. And so taking the AAOT here at SWAC or at another community college and finishing it allows you to transfer in as a junior um, to the college or university of your choice. And the benefit is supposed to be that you spend a couple, you know, $10,000, $20,000 less on two years of your four-year degree that you were doing it at a community college uh, where there aren't any entrance uh, admissions requirements. And if your um, GPA wasn't all that great in high school and you're trying to um, buff up and uh, make better your um, college skills and get a better GPA so that you can um, get into a university, um, community college is the way to do that. And it's a less expensive option than spending the first two years, freshman, and sophomore years at the university and just getting lost on a huge campus uh, as a nameless person, a you know, in a faceless place. Um, so, you know, smaller is better sometimes. Uh, community colleges, we do a lot better job of knowing you guys individually and um, helping you through this process of getting uh, into and being able to navigate college. So that's what we do. I'm just gonna go down here. Everybody is um, typing into the group chat. Thank you very much. Um, if you haven't typed into the group chat, please, please go ahead and open the group chat feature and. You know, you can type in your name and say hello to everybody or whatever. Um, and that's one of the ways that I um, take attendance with this thing. Um, okay, let's take attendance. Let's see who's all here. That would be a fun thing to do. Yes, let's, shall we? Okay. I saw Anya, uh, an, Anaya, no, Alan, Alan Anaya is right here because I saw his name there, I think. And Donovan Bosch. I don't know if I've seen Donovan on here or not. There we go. There's Donovan. And 
Adriel Brantley. Let me see if she is here. And you know, if I'm butchering you guys' names, or there we go, Adriel. Uh, say it say again, please. Adriel. 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 Okay. Long A, gotcha. Okay. Um, Jordan is Jordan here. Uh, la, 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 la. Look it around. Don't see Jordan. Okay. Uh, let's see. Helana Ely is Helana here. And I don't see that person yet. Ezra Johnson. Where is the Johnson? Not yet either. I'm, um, this is going to be a soft start to the quarter because a lot of people have been impacted by the fires in Oregon. We're going to get to that. So not everybody may be here today. Gabrielle, I think I saw you on the list here of people. Yeah, somewhere. Gabby. Let's see. Kincaid. Uh-huh. That's it. And Carly. Uh, Carly, look at the, you guys can always turn on your mics and say, yo, I'm here too, and that'll help. Carly, there's Carly, okay. And Monty, here. okay, okay, let's see. Where do I start with this name? Maude Jeté Bernadette um, Lesher. Oh my God, what a wonderful name. Let's see, yes, Maude here. Don't see her, okay. Um, Let's see. Max Sense is Max Sense. There we go. Libos. Okay. And um, Rosalind Lua is right there. Rosalind. Sorry. And um, Calzat, Calzada. No. Um, uh, Jimena Calzada. Let me see. Are you here? Jimena. Starts with an X. So it's pretty easy to find. Not yet. Page two. Okay, because I got 18 people in this class, so there's a whole lot of people not here. Marion, um, uh, Moranitz, let's see, Marion, there we go. I'm right here. All right, yay, Tristan, Motherall, let's see him. All right, Amelia Russell, Amelia, there we go. Yes, let's see, Daniela. Daniela, uh, I I'm see here. You. I hear, oh yay, fantastic. Connor, uh, Williams. Uh, Connor Williams, let's see, do I see Connor here? Not yet, okay, and finally, last but not least, but the first guy in here, Logan Williams, how are you I'm, doing? Yay, okay, so look at that. That was taking attendance, and that's awfully painful. I don't wanna do that every day, but if, uh, I do record the Zoom lectures uh, so that you guys can look at them later on if you want to. I uh, put them out on YouTube, so I'm gonna create a YouTube channel for this class, and you'll be able to go to the YouTube channel and look at any of these lectures over again if it was so interesting the first time that you've gotta see it again. It'll be there for you. And so that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're in the middle of a pandemic. Ah! Okay. So, and now, of course, last week, we also had a whole bunch of fires erupt in Oregon that have blanketed the western part of the state with smoke and have thrown us all into, um, you know, anything from discomfort to uh, evacuation from your houses. And so I got eight people who did not show up to class today, and they could be evacuating from their houses. Um, they could be really dealing with some serious stuff right now. And so I propose that we do a very soft start to this quarter. Um, I'm gonna go over the syllabus today. Um, we're gonna try to get you guys some materials. Uh, you're gonna have to buy some supplies for the class. And depending on how many of you are local or on campus and have access to our bookstore and some of the local shops, you'll be able to probably get your supplies by Thursday. Those of you who may be remote, and I don't know how many of you there are, and I want to find that out, but if you are, are in another county, state, or country and are taking this um, as a remote class, welcome. And it might take you a little bit longer to get your book and uh, supplies for this class so that you can do your design projects at home. 
we're going to do our projects at home. We're going to photograph them or throw them on a scanner, flatbed scanner, and scan them in or something, and then upload them to my Laker link, to the e-learning platform shell for this class. And that's how I'm going to get them and be able to review them and access them and grade them. And maybe hopefully you'll even be able to share them using the share screen feature in Zoom so that we can do group critiques to critique the projects, usually at the end of the week or something. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. Um, I kind of wanted to go over the navigation to my Laker link and our e-learning course shell, and which is kind of weird because those of you who are here, you are either able to find me, uh, find this link through your um, student email or through the course shell for Art 115, the afternoon section, section two. And I've done this already. But for those who haven't, let's go take a walk, shall we? I'm going to hit my sh screen share to go to my uh, screen share stuff. And I'm going to take you to my Lakerlink portal on my um, page. And so when you log into my Lakerlink here at Southwestern, you're going to get there. Um, I'm going to stay logged in. Thank you very much. Okay, and so you're going to get a general screen like this, and you're going to log in with your login information, your seven-digit um, uh, student number, uh, and um, you know, hopefully you're, you're logging in with your uh, birth date, and then changing your login to your own uh, special um, uh, password, and then you get, you'll have a password and your uh, student ID number to log into the My Laker Link portal. When we uh, scroll down the portal and we come over here to the quick links down here, you're gonna see um, student and staff email. You click that and it'll take you right into your, your uh, student email. And I want you guys checking your student email uh, often because important stuff does get pushed out to you guys by the institution and your teachers. And then we've got your e-learning courses here. And this is a quick link to get you into your e-learning courses. So whoever uh, came into the classroom, welcome. Hi, thanks for being here. And I'm going to click on e-learning courses. I'm going to come in here to Art 11502, Basic Design, and click on that. And that should get us to the main page of Art 115, Section 2. Uh, for basic design. So I've put the Zoom course link here on the main page for you guys and I may be upgrading, updating some of this information, but this is to get us started. And I'm going to keep all of my contact information here. I've got my office phone number here. I'm going to be running um, a uh, uh, office hour every day on Zoom uh, over the noon hour, and I'll send you information about that and post it here. I put my cell phone number here too, so if you want to text me on my cell phone, you can. I've never done that before for students, so this is a first for me. Um, I don't want to become frenzies with all you guys, so please, you know, don't everybody uh, text me all the time because that's not going to work. But you know, if you get, you know important, legit questions, I'm happy to email and, or uh, answer your texts. And of course, my SWAC email is available for you too. As we go into the stuff, uh, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's our very similar e-learning platform here. And so we're gonna talk about our syllabus today. I'm clicking on the syllabus and going to the syllabus page. I don't have a text version in here in, this, in the, uh, syllabus page. You have to go down to the downloadable version to get to the Art 115 syllabus. And this is a document that's on Microsoft Word. And we can click on it and it downloaded it for me. So now I can open that and we are right here into the syllabus. And um, I mean, it's your basic um, college syllabus that describes um, all of the contact information and the meeting information for the course. And our textbook, which is Art Fundamentals, Theory and Practice. Hopefully you guys can get a hold of that. This is a book that is um, out of print, which is actually a good thing because it is no longer a $150 brand new 
uh, book that the publishers are making huge money off of. Now it is a used or remaindered book that you can get from our college bookstore or from Amazon uh, online. And you can get that um, for maybe anywhere from 75 to 50 bucks, depending on uh, how old it is and what kind of shape it's in. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Sorry about that. I just, I just, what happened to my portal? I, it just kicked me out. So now I have to, I have to log in and get back into what I was doing there. Sorry about that. So we're going to jump right back into, um, the e-learning course, part 115, la la la. We were doing the syllabus because it was fun because it was so fun. So getting to the syllabus, and this is the live link right here to the syllabus. It dumps it off down here in the lower part of the screen that you can click on to get you here. Once again, we are here. And so I don't know if your screens are doing the same thing mine is, but I'm going to do this really briefly. We've got the course description and objectives. Um, we're going to do about eight short projects in this course for the quarter. We're going to go over the supplies list, and I think I may leave this place, but I want you to know that your supplies list is right here in the um, uh, syllabus, and you can download that, you can look at it, you can print it out, whatever you need to do. I'm going to leave this and come back to um, uh, my screen now that I can share with. So let's see, I am screen sharing. I'm going to stop the share. I'm coming back here to go through the supplies list. So wee here we go. Let's see, which way do I want to be? I want to be over here. So first thing we want to do is get Art Fundamentals, Theory and Practice by Ockverk, good old Ockverk, and other authors. Um, it's out of print. It's a really wonderful book. I really like it. It's good for all three terms of this course. It is richly illustrated, all in color and glossy pages, and it's really good for that. This book smells good. Even the old books smell good. I like that. This is actually a pretty valuable, good book for the uh, emerging artist who uh, wants uh, something to refer to occasionally um, to give you some advice and ideas about um, the elements of art and the principles of design. So we're going to go through this. This is your text. Um, there are the last three uh, or so um, editions of this, the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th edition. I guess there's four editions that I've been working with over the last uh, 20 years or so will be available. So all of the covers won't look like this one. This is the 11th edition cover. And so the covers change every two or three years, but all of the interior is pretty much the same. Uh, what, uh, can we see the cover of the edition we have to get? I um, actually, any one would be fine. The, the 12th edition is the most recent edition, and I don't have that one. Um, but anything from the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th edition of Art Fundamentals will be fine that you can pick it up. The older editions should cost less if you don't want to pay more than 20 bucks for a book. The newer editions will cost more, probably in the 40 to 60 or 70 dollar range. So it's up to you how up to date and uh, how much you want to spend on your textbook. But it's going to be art fundamentals. Fundamentals. Okay. And so I'm going through the, the stack of stuff that I want to use for this quarter. I would also like to do some kind of a sketchbook. And this is the hardest thing because uh, usually I like to collect sketchbooks at... Um, uh, midterm and finals to see how you're doing in terms of, uh, let's see, how you're doing in terms of taking notes and everything. But in a classic art and design classroom situation, um, to have the black um, hardbound notebook that has all white pages in it allows you to do all kinds of drawings, thumbnail sketches, taking notes, um, so that you've got all of your ideas annotated and drawn out and that kind of thing. And something that does not have lines in it as a notebook really helps to facilitate creativity um, and being an art student. Um, 
getting one of these is really nice, not just for this class, but you can use it for other classes down the road. So if you're taking a drawing class, a painting class, sculpture, or ceramics, you can kind of break this up into sections and use each section uh, for your own kind of purposes. And so this is not exactly a book that I had. I don't know, I'm trying to find a decent page to share with you. Here's one. I've had these books since grad school. So, you know, I can be, I can be taking notes and, and writing down my ideas and stuff. And I can also um, illustrate ideas and do thumbnail sketches and stuff as I try to work out um, a design that I wanna do for a design project. So it's a really nice, um, way of working out your ideas um, in pencil and paper. Um, it's old school, but it's kind of fun, and uh, art teachers still like this kind of thing. It's suggested at this point, I'm, nah, I'm not gonna require this, but I, you know, it's really good if you're an art student to get a sketchbook and keep it as a journal. Write down your ideas. Um, the kinds of things that uh, inspire you, um, work on your projects, uh, whatever you wanna do. I get a lot of people with a lot of other drawings in there besides design projects. And as a matter of fact, if I just go right in behind myself here, right up to the wall right back here, I get a lot of students who draw pictures of me in the class. They do interesting drawings that could be anything from a lovely portrait to a nasty caricature. And that's good too. So, you know, extra credit for people who do weird drawings or caricatures in the, in the class. Ha ha ha, it's kind of fun. Anyway. Is this a sketchbook? That's fine for a sketchbook. That's a spiral bound sketchbook, but that's great. It has white pages in it. Um, they don't have to be white, they just have to be unlined so that you have the, the flexibility to be able to draw in the sketchbook. Okay. The next thing that I've got on my supplies list that is gonna kind of freak out some people is a fashion magazine of some kind. This is this month's Vogue right here. And the fashion industry has been just completely, um, almost destroyed by pandemic coronavirus. And so um, they came back as strong as they possibly could this fall with, um, covers and articles and photo spreads in all of the art magazine art um, fashion magazines from new york that deal with um, um, models and designers of color um, especially because the black lives matter movement and all of the protests that have been going on in minneapolis um, portland all over the country so this happens to be a painting of a fashion designer so she's posed like a fashion model out on the roof of a uh, apartment building in uh, New York with the New York or Brooklyn skyline in the background, which is kind of interesting. Um, they've also got this one titled Hope, uh, a, a special issue. And they're um, at least this month, and hopefully you know, it's, it, makes, it marks a change in um, the fashion world from now on continuing that they're not just gonna be um, so uh, white people centered, that they're going to have more um, models uh, dealing with you know, people of color, people of different backgrounds, more diversity and that and so on. We'll see how they do. But this brings up an interesting point that the Black Lives Matter movement and the idea of some kind of racial reckoning in this country is a white people problem. Um, you know, black people have been working for years, you know, trying to gain respect and recognition and a place at the table. But um, we really have found in the middle of this pandemic, dealing with the um, aftermath of the latest um, bunch of, uh, you know, police shootings of black men and stuff, that we have just some serious baked in um, uh, racial issues in, in this country um, that white people still don't get after 50 or 60 years after the um, civil rights movement. Um, I was, I'm 59 years old. Uh, I was born in 1961. In 1963, there was the March on Washington and the civil rights movement uh, led by Martin Luther King was at its height. 
And one would think with all of the gains that we've made um, with um, black music, black culture, um, that we would be at a better place at this point in life. And you guys, uh, to your credit, are way better at um, uh, a sense of racial reckoning and a sense of fairness than people of my generation are. My people are the problem. I get that. And so, uh, but all of the fashion magazines this month are also dealing with it. And so the models, the designers, um, the articles inside deal with all of this stuff. I would like you guys to try to find one fashion magazine, if possible, and buy that. Um, here's the L. Uh, here's Cardi B on the cover of L magazine this month. So they're all dealing with this issue, and it's, it's really important, and it's about time that we deal with this. Even the art magazines are dealing with this. This is Art in America, again, from New York City. Um, the cover of this magazine is a painting by an African-American artist. Um, the painting shows a figure um, with a whole bunch of arrows sticking out of him. Um, this actually recapitulates a theme in art history that goes all the way back 2,000 years to St. Sebastian, um, one of the early Christian saints who was martyred because, by um, being tied to a Roman column and shot full of a bunch of arrows um, as an early Christian saint and martyr. And so here um, the artist is recapitulating that idea, except instead of the early Christian saint, it is a black person, uh, again, shot through with arrows. Whoops, sorry about the reflection on that. Um, kind of making a comment about contemporary uh, issues um, in the news dealing with black men getting shot by um, you know, uh, white police or white Roman soldiers. You know, it's 2,000 years and we're you know, dealing with the same stuff. Um, so interesting that art in America, again, is, has a more of a sensitivity to dealing with issues of racial reckoning and uh, giving um, artists of color and um, more diversity, more uh, um, coverage in what is usually a really white magazine. So again, um, this stuff is happening in the culture and it's all over the place. My favorite magazine is the Vogue. It always has been because the, the pages are thick. The printing is a very rich and uh, thick printing, high quality and for those of you who like fashion magazines, you're going to be able to read a fashion magazine. It'll be wonderful, and you'll be able to wallow in this and love it, and it'll be great. For those of you who hate fashion magazines because they represent an objectification of women, the beauty myth, um, everything that's wrong with the culture about women, fashion, beauty, and all of that, you're going to be able to... Um, destroy this thing over the course of the quarter because we're going to use the fashion magazine as source material for some of our projects. And so we're going to be cutting it up, cutting the pages out of it, um, cutting shapes and lines and textures uh, out of the pages of this thing to create some collage projects um, as part of the design thing. So for those who hate fashion and the fashion industry, and all of this because of what it represents. And if you're you know, good feminists, that's good because you are gonna to get to um, buy this magazine and then uh, chop it up and destroy it. So it, it's a win-win for everybody in that way. <sighs> okay, okay, we did, oh, I'm in the middle of, of supplies. So I'd like you to get the book and the fashion magazine. I want you to get something that we call Bristol Board. Bristol board is unique to what we deal with as designers because Bristol board is kind of like a cardboard. It's a white cardboard that is heavy and smooth. And in, in design classes, we use this for our designs. You can draw on it and it's really sturdy and heavy duty. It allows you to be able to erase really heavily, change your mind and draw and do all kinds of heavy manipulations to your drawing. It's also a really nice heavy duty platform for doing collages on so that you can uh, glue stuff onto this stuff and 
um, it, it's not something that's going to fall apart as easy as just a sheet of computer paper. So um, I'd like you to get uh, the Bristol board if possible. I got this at Staples. So it's available at our college bookstore at Staples. I did not find it at Walmart this time. Walmart had watercolor paper, which is similar. And in a pinch, it'll do just fine. The only difference between watercolor board or paper and the Bristol board is that watercolor has a texture to it, which you can't see on the, on the thing. So this is textured. Whereas the Bristol board has a smooth texture to it, which really lends itself much better to design. But you can use the watercolor if you can't find the Bristol board. This is a gummed tablet of 20 sheets of Bristol. And this will, this will be enough to do all the projects for this quarter and maybe a few in the next quarter. So one thing of Bristol board. We're gonna need some basic uh, design tools. I really like, a pencil. Get a pencil because we love pencils and the ability to, to sharpen the pencil would be good. Um, I like rollerball pens. Um, you only need one but I happen to buy the whole pack of Uniball rollerball pens. This is a medium point rollerball pen and this makes a really nice line. It's a very sensual, sexy, flowing black line so that when you're drawing, um, when you're um, either freehand drawing or uh, drawing lines with the aid of a ruler or something, it gives you a rich, true, flowing black line, uninterrupted, it's beautiful. It's a medium point rollerball pen. So sometimes they also call them a gel pen or a gel ball pen but rollerball is what we're looking for. It's a little bit more than just a ballpoint pen. It's black. This is a 0 0.07 millimeter um, medium point pen. So it's, it's just the right size. It's not too big, not too small, just right. Everything in art and design is based on the Goldilocks principle. You know Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Um, not too big, not too small, just right. Not too hard, not too soft, just right. So, we like to try to find the art supplies that are just right for the application. You're going to need some kind of a glue stick. Glue stick. There we go. Glue stick. So anyway, just a glue stick so that you can do these um, glue it up kinds of uh, collages. Um, you can use white Elmer's glue if you just happen to have some and don't want to spend another 49 cents on a glue stick. Um, you're going to need a, huh, there it is. It's a exacto um, knife. I really like the exacto knives. This is a classic uh, supply for art classes um, that comes with replaceable razor sharp blades. And we want to learn how to use the exacto the knife and not cut ourselves or hurt anybody with the exacto knife. So that's something that we like for this class. To go along with the X-Acto knife, we use steel um, uh, rulers. I really like the steel ruler. I still have the one that I got in college uh, 40 years ago. Um, it's a basic uh, tool in any designer or artist toolkit. You can get either the one foot long steel ruler or you can get very fancy, the 18 inch long steel ruler. But steel is very nice because not only can you measure uh, precisely with it, but you can use this straight edge for drawing straight lines or even running a knife along the straight edge to cut straight lines on projects. And so we do highly recommend the steel ruler. Um, aluminum rulers are okay. They're also available. Walmart has them. Um, they're cheaper than the steel rulers, and this one will set you back only about $1.99 at Walmart. So you can get the aluminum ruler also. Um, that should just about do it for our art supplies for this class. I can't see anything else in my bag of tricks that I need to tell, tell you about. I always buy myself a big oversized, overlength pencil box to keep all this stuff in. And it's 
um, it's 12, it's 13 inches long. So the, the one foot long rulers will fit in it too, as well as all of your other art supplies in some kind of a plastic pencil box. Only if you want it, it's not required for the class. Okay, man, that was a lot of stuff. I am 40 minutes into this horrible presentation and it's all only horrible because I talk too much. Materials list. Syllabus, first assignment. Okay. Um, I dropped something on the floor. So I talked about doing a kind of a soft opening to uh, this class so that we can try to support each other um, while we're dealing with trying to figure out how to do an art class online. Um, I, I structured this so that we would have live synchronous class meetings that are regularly scheduled class time. It will actually give you guys more of a sense of routine and rhythm to your week. Uh, you won't feel like you're totally adrift and um, all alone by yourself trying to do projects and assignments. Um, my, my students spring quarter really appreciated the fact that I did this um, as kind of a regular class routine so that we could interact a little bit with uh, each other and that you can interact with a teacher that seems almost live uh, and you know hopefully is more engaging with somewhat of a sense of humor than um, just the staleness of the e-learning software or the e-learning um, learning management tool that we have to put this class inside of. So we're going to meet on a daily basis, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, one o'clock or so for at least an hour every day. Then you're going to have your own time uh, to do the homework on. We're going to try to meet live also as a way of um, doing oral critiques to um, look at what everybody's done and for you guys to be able to share your work with the group um, in, in a supportive and non-critical, non, you know, backstabbing critical kind of a way. Uh, that's what we do to do a lot of the evaluation for our projects is an oral critique process where I do, of course, most of the talking because you guys hate to talk. Um, but uh, also because we're doing the slow, soft opening here, I'm going to want to be talking to you guys or letting you guys talk a little bit about what your challenges are. So you might not be ready to do that today. We might get into this a lot more on Wednesday. Um, talking about how are you doing? Are you dealing with the fires uh, by having to uh, evacuate? Or you know, are you dealing with the fires that is really um, uh, changing your life quite a bit for the, for the negative? Um, and otherwise, we're gonna kind of get caught up as we buy our materials and get that stuff. And I'll do a couple of demonstrations and lectures to get us into the rest of this week and early next week. So um, we're going to get up and running slowly, softly, with a soft start to the quarter. Um, the first assignment I'd like you guys to do is just a little teeny tiny survey. I know you guys get surveyed to death in colleges, in high school, all over the place, and you will get surveyed to death at SWAC too. But because this is a remote class and I can't see you, um, face to face in the same space where we can tell jokes to each other and hug and all that kind of stuff. It would be nice if you guys could fill out this survey. It is in your coursework section of my Laker link for this class. And so you open up coursework and it's the first and right now only um, homework assignment in code coursework. And it's just some questions um, on a, a Word document. So you're going to have to download it. Um, and fill it out for yourself and save it and then upload it back again uh, to turn it in as, a, as an assignment, as a um, Word document. And I'm going to try to compile all the information so that we know how many of you are in campus housing, uh, in the Coos Bay area, or taking this class remotely. How many of you are art or design majors and how many are not? Because I'm sure that half of you are not art or design majors, you're taking this class because it satisfies a general requirement for the AAOT, which is just fine. I'm gonna be teaching this class both for the art and design majors on the one hand, and for the general student on the other hand. So this class is 
accessible and able to be done by everybody, whether you're an art major or not. And hopefully the art majors will just um, jump into the assignments um, with more enthusiasm and vigor because they just like to do art projects more. And so we'll see the range of kind of engagement with the projects as we go through all of this stuff. Since I've been talking for 45 minutes, I wanted to give you guys a chance to um, talk. So think about what you might want to talk about while I show you one more thing. Um, at the beginning of class, I was working on this particular COVID mask. Oops, there we go, upside right. In the 3D design class, um, spring quarter, we, we took a deep dive into mask making and we looked at masks and that kind of thing. And it was difficult because many of my, my students don't sew and I didn't sew either when I started this project. Um, but um, as a designer, it was an interesting challenge for me to look at the kinds of masks that people were sewing out there and donating to hospitals and whatnot and trying to see what um, design features were in the mask designs, the best mask designs out there, and could I improve upon them and how might I improve upon them? So I took, I guess, what is this called? The Olsen mask? I think this is kind of the Olsen mask concept, but I've changed the contours of it a little bit. I made the front of the mask a lot straighter. I made the angle that fits on the bridge of the nose um, more at, a, at an angle that fits naturally on the bridges of most people's noses. Um, I do like the idea on a COVID mask of the ear loops. Ear loops are a really fast way of getting the mask on you and you don't have to mess up your hairstyle or anything else to get the thing tied on and back and so to get the mask fit well with ear loops is a really nice feature now what i've done today just today was put on some of these um, copper or brass grommets that i just picked up from joanne's fabric store and i did that because when i designed this mask it has an outside cover it has an inside liner, and the inside liner is two pieces that part in the middle so that you can actually put a filter in here. And I went and got a furnace filter that had a pretty high uh, HEPA or whatever I can't think of the equivalent of an N95 rating is, but this is one of those um, fused woven fabric uh, filters that allow the air to pass through it really easily but is super fine and kind of uh, has um, the ionic charge so that particles stick to it dust particles and whatnot stick to it and this is almost as good as an n95 filter so when you've got the cloth cover when you've got the cloth liner and you've got the um, furnace filter insert in here that is the entirety of the mask, you wind up with a mask that does a really good job of filtering for everything, including the COVID virus. And this week, it also filters for smoke particles in the air. So with the addition of the grommets in the front, I now have um, perforations ah, in my mask so that air can go right through the front of the mask where air happens to want to go through because my mouth and my nose are right behind here. And so less um, pressure is created inside the mask, which doesn't fog up my glasses anymore. I have a pretty good seal all the way around the mask this way. And I get good um, gases transmission through the filter, which is what a mask is supposed to do. So you can see that designers can take an idea, um, analyze the idea and try to work with that idea and improve it quite a bit. Some of you may be interested in fashion or fashion design. If you buy the Vogue magazine, you'll see that there are some designers working on uh, fashion masks, fashion COVID-19 masks. And the whole idea of fashion designers taking this on is wonderful because to get a mask wearing 
culture, you know, we need this to be fashionable. It can't just be dorky looking. And suddenly this is right in our wheelhouse. It's right in the province of the designer. And so to have fashion designers working on this so that uh, you're using interesting prints and interesting designs and maybe interesting extra um, dangly things, you know, on the mask that are decorative or whatever, um, you're starting to work with the possibility of making the mask a beautiful thing. You're making the mask an accessory, like a belt or shoes or something that accessorizes, you know, a handbag that can accessorize your look or your outfit. For men, um, you know, if you're going to be buying a wool suit, you might consider now the possibility of buying a COVID mask out of the same wool that the suit is made out of. If it's a business suit, it might be a pinstripe. The COVID mask could be a pinstripe. Or the COVID mask could be a floral pattern in silk made out of the same material and pattern as a necktie so that the you have some kind of um, coordination and you know an accessory that goes along with the outfit. I think I believe that we're going to be dealing with COVID masks for a long time. We're going to be dealing with COVID-19 for a long time. Um, we as humans don't really do very well with coronaviruses. It is the common cold virus. The coronavirus is a common cold virus. And we don't really develop much immunity to that. Um, I see that if we develop a vaccine for, corona, uh, for COVID-19, we may only develop an immunity for... Um, four months or so, and then we may have to get uh, another injection. We might have to get quarterly vaccinations to um, have any kind of ongoing protection from COVID-19. Um, it's the nature of the coronavirus, and this is going to be kind of a brave new world that we're living in. So masks might be part of our um, the way that we live uh, kind of on an ongoing uh, as an ongoing feature, even if we get a vaccine that is more or less effective going forward. So this is a way that, you know, designers can really insert ourselves right back into something that's very important, that's, uh, that uh, is very meaningful to a lot of people, to all the people on the face of the planet, because um, we need to continually upgrade um, the effectiveness and the design of masks so that they are inexpensive, that they are um, fashionable, and uh, that they're uh, effective and easy to wear for people. So you're going to see a continuing development of mask design going forward as we do this. And that was the mask tie-in, the design tie-in to your basic design class for today. Okay, so now getting back to you guys. If anybody wants to share anything for the good of the order, if any of you happen to be storytellers, go ahead and unmute your mic and tell me anything about how your summer went, or if you're dealing with fire and smoke right now, or how your COVID um, uh, you know, quarantine has been going this summer, or if you got COVID-19 and you want to share that with the group, please go ahead and unmute your mic and just chime in if you'd like. I know, I know that on the first day of class, nobody's going to want to chime in on the first day of class and tell me anything. Logan might because he took the class, he took a class from me before, so he knows me. But you guys, unless you're very gregarious um, and outgoing, you might not be, you might not feel like you've got anything worth sharing today, which is okay too. I'm going to pause one more time just in case anybody wants to unmute their mic and say hi or share anything about fires or smoke or anything else. If you tell me that you have to chew the air before you get to breathe it, that's fine too. No. Well, I, I wanna thank you guys for um, joining in today. I don't think I got too many more people uh, in the participants list than we started with. So we're missing a couple people yet. Um, but um, I want you guys um, to know that I will be posting the recordings of this thing on YouTube so that you can access this again if you want to. And all of the uh, class meetings for the quarter will be uh, posted in a um, 
design uh, channel uh, on YouTube so that you'll have a place to go to for these, uh, these lectures if you want to see them again. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I tried looking for the uh, turn it in uh, section on the uh, e-learning lear learning website and I couldn't find it. Okay, um, try the, the um, coursework uh, section. Um, this first uh, survey that I put on there is going to be uh, loaded into the coursework section. And I don't have Turnitin because I don't um, have you guys writing um, uh, papers uh, where we're worried about um, plagiarism or anything. So I don't, I don't have a link to Turnitin for my class. Um, thank you, though, for asking. So, Logan, are, Dan Daniela. Um, are the Zoom are the Zoom meetings mandatory? Um, are what mandatory? I didn't quite catch the first part. Um, are the Zoom meetings mandatory? I, I'd like them to be. I'd like you to consider this a class. And so um, um, I'm going to take attendance. Uh, I'm giving you points for being here. Uh, if you can't work it into your schedule, um, email me or text me and we can work something out. As long as you're being able to uh, watch these Zoom meetings on recordings or something like that, you don't have to do it at this time period. So if you're joining from another um, uh, time zone that's a long way away, then you'll have to do this um, uh, with the recording of the class instead of live. And I understand that. Does that make sense? Pretty much, I think so. Okay, I don't see any other uh, mics unmuted. Uh, and I'm just gonna thank you guys for joining today. I wanna see you guys again on Wednesday at one o'clock. Um, same class time, same class channel, and we'll keep going. So until Wednesday at one o'clock, thank you. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye, yes. And we'll end this thing. Bye-bye. Bye, okay. Okay, and...